you have green hair algae, bubble algae, turf algae, or any kind of plant or animal pest that you're looking to get rid of in your tank, does your tank look like this? This is what can happen after months of neglect. But don't worry because we have a solution that can take care of all of that in just one minute. This is our 40 hour update after the dip. High five. Hey, I'm Professor Pollop and welcome to the Coral's Coral Channel. Three reasons why your coral dip sucks. Most coral dips are iodine or lemonine based and some people use hydrogen peroxide. The problems with all of these dips, for one, iodine and lemonine dips take a long time, 10 to 15 minutes per dip. Um, second, um, iodine and lemonine dips are not very effective. They'll leave pests or they don't kill any algae. And third is that they can be really harsh on your corals. Mostly the iodine is harsh on your corals and also people that use hydrogen peroxide can be harsh on the corals as well. Um, the good thing about hydrogen peroxide is it will also kill any algae and it works in just one to two minutes. However, I noticed especially with a couple of kinds of corals including fungias and candy canes that it was super harsh on those. We'll use our new secret recipe, Professor Pollock's Bubble Bath Coral Dip to transform this tank from zero to hero. This revolutionary new coral dip combines just the right amount of hydrogen peroxide and lemonine along with a few other stabilizing ingredients to create a formula that's super effective on both plant and animal pests. We've successfully used this dip to kill bubble algae, bryopsis, green hair algae, euphilia eating flatworms, red planaria flatworms, bristleworms, asterina starfish, dinoflagellates, and many other plant and animal pests in saltwater aquariums without causing any harm to fish, coral, or anemones. Here's what we'll be using today. We have our five gallon bucket of Professor Pollock's Bubble Bath Coral Dip. We have this measuring device so that we can get a one to five ratio of dip to salt water. I've got gloves to protect my hands. We've got salt water from the tank that the rocks that we'll be dipping is in. And then we have this container where we'll mix the dip solution. We have this other container that is a rinse bucket with just fresh salt water. You don't always have to rinse when you're using this dip. I do recommend rinsing when you're going to dip a lot of rocks or a lot of things in your tank. But if you're just dipping a couple of frags or a couple of small rocks, it'll be okay to put them right back in your tank after the dip without rinsing. After a lot of experiments, we found that wearing gloves is the best way to keep your hands safe and protected. And now we are going to start measuring. I'm going to first measure with one part of dip. I'm probably going to have to do, do this maybe two or three times to get the right amount. The dip comes in a bunch of different sizes, 16 ounce, 32 ounce, one gallon, and five gallons, which is what we're using this time. All right, there's one part dip. And now I'm gonna get five parts salt water, so I'm just gonna dip this into the salt water. So I'm gonna do this uh, probably two more times, and then we'll have the right amount of dip for the rocks that we'll be dipping. This rock has a Monty that's partly alive on it still, and a lot of bubble algae as well as, well as hair algae. I'm going to do it upside down since the algae is pretty much all on the top. And I'm going to start my timer for one minute, and I'm going to grab a couple more rocks. And I'm going to splash a little bit because there's a little bit of algae here on the bottom. So even if it doesn't cover it all the way, it's still pretty effective if you just kind of splash or pour it on top. We are going to take this guy out now. It's been a minute. I'm going to kind of move him around a little bit, get any loose stuff off. Get, let that drain for a second. And then I'm going to put it in the rinse. Move it around there, kind of splash it off. All right. So, now I'm going to put this guy back in. You can see this Monty on top here. So this is the dip bin. You can see a lot of the hair algae that came off. There's a few pieces of bristle worm in here. And um, there's an Asterina star over here as well. And then I'm sure I gotta go kind of dig because it sinks, but 
Oh, here you go. There's a little bit of bubble algae. So sometimes the bubble algae that's more loose will come off during the dip. A lot of the bubble algae will stay on the rocks, but it'll disappear over the next few days in your tank. And then here's our rinse bin. And we got a lot more green hair algae, a few bristle worms, and a little bit of bubble algae in here as well. And this is cyanobacteria. This is the tank about 20 minutes after. We got a net and we scooped out some of the loose algae that was detaching after it got back in the flow. We did that to help clear things up a little faster and also to help make sure that the overflow didn't get super clogged with algae. One more thing to note is that we did dip pretty much all of the rocks in this tank, which I felt comfortable doing because we have a lot of macroalgae and other things in the sub to help hold bacteria and stabilize the tank. Normally, if you're gonna dip a lot of or all of your rocks, I would recommend doing about half and then waiting between three and seven days and dipping the other half then. We have um, the one rock that we didn't dip over here. You can still see a lot of hair algae on it and all of the rest of the rocks are pretty clean. They're a lot cleaner than they used to be. The hair algae is probably 70 or 80% gone and there's still some bubble algae on the rock. The bubble algae is a little stubborn but it will start turning white and clear and just disappear over the next few days. We just wanted to give you guys an update about 20 hours after the dip we did. All of the algae is starting to die off. A lot of the hair algae is gone. There's still quite a bit of bubble algae, but you can start to see that some of the bubble algae is turning clear or white. So all the rest of the hair algae and the bubble algae is gonna to continue to die off over the next few days. Um, and after 72 hours or so, it should be pretty much all gone. We had this Monty right here. There's uh, polyps out. So it looks like that guy is gonna make a comeback. And then we have this Black Widow bubble tip anemone down here that is looking good still. There was even some Space Invader Pectinia that had died off because it was covered in algae. And now we saw a few little specks left that is on the sand bed that we didn't know was there before. These are the mini maxi carpet anemones that we dipped inside of that acclimation box. When we dipped them, there was so much algae and stuff in there, I thought there was only two. but. Now that it's starting to clear up, I can actually see all three anemones and they all look really happy. And you can tell that there's way less algae and again, that will keep on disappearing over the next few days. This is our 40 hour update after the dip. You can see that a lot of the algae is gone. Some of the hair algae has turned white and some of it is still a little bit green, but the rest of it will just keep falling off over the next few days. You can see that a lot of the bubble algae is starting to turn white and disappear. We have this black widow bubble tip anemone down here that's still looking great. There's a peppermint shrimp down here that was has survived. Everything is still alive. All the things that we had in here is, that were alive are still alive. There's another peppermint shrimp down here. I think he's hard to see. Now we're going to the Monty. There was actually a sand dollar Monty hiding underneath all of that algae and it's still alive. It doesn't look great but it was covered in all of that hair algae and it went through the dip. You can even see some of the polyps starting to poke out of it. And we've got our sailfin tang, two clownfish. We've got snails and crabs that are still alive. And then these are the mini maxi anemones in here. All three of them are still looking very happy. We dipped that whole mushroom box. So it's looking pretty good. Here are some comments from customers that have used the bubble bath on their own tank. Professor Pollock's Bubble Bath Coral Dip. Get yours on CoralsCoral.com. Wholesale is also available. So if you'd like your LFS to stop this, please let them know. All right, thank you everybody for watching. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comments what video you'd like to see next.